and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My name is Lilith and for today's video I'm going to give you my personal step-by-step -step guide on how to plan the perfect Thanksgiving dinner. I've been planning my family's full Thanksgiving dinner for about seven or eight years now and I think I've devised it down to seven steps you can take starting today to start working towards the perfect Thanksgiving dinner that you won't have to stress about the week of Thanksgiving. Because let's be honest, if you go into it with a plan, it will be way less stressful. But before we jump into that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video from me. We're gonna be doing all kinds of Thanksgiving videos this month, recipes, how to's, and all kinds of Thanksgiving stuff coming. Lots of Thanksgiving recipes. And go ahead and check out my Thanksgiving recipes from last year as well. I did a pie crust comparison and did a couple other recipes that might be good for your Thanksgiving this year. And also don't forget to give this video a like. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into it. You see me looking down, I'm gonna be looking at my laptop because I have my notes, my whole guide on how to make the perfect Thanksgiving dinner. I'm gonna have a couple different PDFs linked down below that you can look at a couple different guides and templates to build your courses and your to build your courses and your dishes and stuff like that. I'm going to include one that's blank that you can fill out with all of your own stuff and then one that has the different dishes that I make for my Thanksgiving dinner if you want to look at that as a template for your own. So step one, decide how many courses you're going to have. For my Thanksgiving, we have three courses during the actual Thanksgiving meal. And then we also have snacks out throughout the day because we don't really eat breakfast or lunch on Thanksgiving because we're going to have such a big meal. We just put snacks out during the day. I consider those snacks like a separate course and I plan that right along with the rest of my Thanksgiving dinner. My three courses for the actual dinner though, usually go salad for the first course. The second course, I consider the main course. It consists of the protein, the sides, and the sauces and gravies. And the third course, everyone's favorite, dessert. Step two of how to plan the perfect Thanksgiving dinner is to research and choose what dishes you want to be in those courses. This might consist of writing down all of the dishes that are traditional for your family to make every year and also deciding what new ones you wanna make this year. My family has a couple things that are traditional and we make every year, and then there are a couple things that we make every year, but we change the recipe every year. We always have mashed potatoes and it's always the same recipe every year. We always have macaroni and cheese, but it's always a different recipe every year. Same with the salad and the vegetable sides. Those change up every year, whereas we're always going to have rolls. And stuff like our stuffing will pretty much stay the same every year, except the bread we sometimes change out. So once you have decided what all dishes you want in your different courses, what protein sides, sauces, if you want snacks, we like to do things like cheese plates and vegetable trays, then you can move on to recipe research. So step three of how to make the perfect Thanksgiving dinner is to write slash collect all of the recipes in one place that you're going to need. For me, that means I do research on each different dish that I decided I wanted to make and I look at a bunch of different recipes online and then I collect all that information and I write my own recipe. But it's also perfectly valid to research and find a recipe online or in a book that you like and just take that exact recipe. You're going to want to gather all of these recipes into one folder or document. For me personally, I gather all of my recipes into one pages document. So by the end of this step, I end up with a whole long pages document with all of the recipes that I'm going to need for that year. Even if you're making say stuffing from a box or mashed potatoes for a box. I would still put down everything you need for that because a lot of times like mashed potatoes from a box may call for butter or milk. And so I would still put box mashed potatoes, 
butter, milk. I would still have that recipe on there. Step four of how to make the perfect Thanksgiving dinner is break each recipe down into its individual components. So here's what I mean by that. Is there a recipe within a recipe that you need to make? For example, stuffing. Do you need to make the stock or are you going to buy the stock? Another example would be something like glazed carrots. Do you need to make the glaze for the carrots? For the salad, are you buying a dressing or do you need to make the dressing? Is that a separate recipe? Stuff like that. And for me, there's a lot more sub recipes than there might be for you guys because I literally make as much as possible from scratch when it comes to Thanksgiving dinner. That means if I'm putting candied nuts on my salad, I'm gonna candy them myself and that's gonna be a separate sub recipe. That means for the mashed potatoes, I'm making the sour cream myself. So that's a sub recipe. And you want to expand all of your recipes out so that you have all of your main recipes with all of your sub recipes in that document. Now we're gonna break this out even further into smaller components. If you notice, we're breaking all of this down into smaller and smaller components, just like you would a big project. So things are more manageable. The next component you're going to break down the recipes into is what needs to be cut for that recipe. We tend to have to cut a lot of carrots and celery and onions and garlic and maybe other vegetables for our dinners. And trying to cut them all in one day on Thanksgiving is just time consuming and not worth it when it can be done ahead of time. So you're going to extract out from each recipe, say you need a cup of diced onions for your stuffing. You're going to break that down out of the recipe. And then you're going to have a list within each recipe of just stuff that needs to be cut up for that recipe. And the last way that you're going to break down the recipes is looking at what can be made and frozen ahead of time. For example, pie dough, you can make today, freeze it, thaw it on Thanksgiving day or the day before or whenever you're going to make the pies and use it then. So why would you wait to make pie dough when you're already busy making other things? You could make that right now. For me, we also do sugar cookies on our Thanksgiving. So I can make the sugar cookie dough and freeze it and then just make the cookies the week of Thanksgiving. I could also do the same thing with the seitan turkey. I could make it now and freeze it and it would still be good on Thanksgiving. Really be critical about what you can do far in advance so that when it gets closer to Thanksgiving, you've already made those things and you don't have to worry about it. Step five of how to make the perfect Thanksgiving dinner is write the grocery list. If you're like me, you're gonna get your groceries from a few different places. So go through all of the recipes that you just wrote down and make a master grocery list of everything that you're going to need to buy and take that master grocery list and separate it out into the different places that you're going to buy the things from. For me, we buy some things from Costco, some things from Whole Foods, and some things from Thrive Market. I know that the Thrive Market groceries, I could place that order as soon as I'm done with that grocery list because it's all pantry stuff and it's gonna keep until Thanksgiving. I know that the Costco stuff is also gonna keep fairly well, so I'm gonna do that one a little bit earlier than I do the Whole Foods run, which is usually gonna be the stuff that's gonna go out the quickest. Step six of how to plan the perfect Thanksgiving dinner. Work backwards to see what needs to be done by when. So for myself, I start this whole plan the first week of November. I usually try and have basically everything that we've talked about already done by the second week of November. Because for the one and a half to two weeks leading up to Thanksgiving, I'm going to have stuff to do for Thanksgiving dinner and I'll explain a little bit. You're going to do kind of what we do in a kitchen. You're going to write a prep list for every single day. Working backwards from Thanksgiving, I know that basically everything needs to be done on Thanksgiving, obviously. The day before Thanksgiving, we 
make our pies. Well, I know that I need to have the apples cut for that, and I know I need to have the pumpkin puree made for that. I know that those things need to be done either the day before or two days before. So this is where having all of the recipes broken down into smaller components really comes in handy. What can be done further out and what has to be done closer to Thanksgiving. On these daily prep lists, I will have what days I need grocery shopping done, what days I need to place if I'm ordering anything, what days I need to place the order, and each day I'll have one or two things that I need to do that day. So it's not overwhelming, it's just one or two things that's going to help me prepare for Thanksgiving a little bit better. And I'm going to link uh, last year's daily prep list down below so you can kind of see how I broke it out this year because I'm having Thanksgiving at my own place instead of having to bring all of the food to my grandma's house I can actually get a lot more done before Thanksgiving Day but I'm still gonna give you it as an example of what I did I'm still gonna give you it as an example of how I broke it out into small bite-sized steps leading up to things the two weeks leading up to Thanksgiving like two weeks before Thanksgiving last year I made the butter I made the seasoning mix because I make um, basically a master seasoning mix that goes into the turkey, it goes into the stuffing, it goes into a few different components. I made the cookie dough and the pie dough. The next day on Monday, I made the pumpkin puree, I made the bacon marinade because I can freeze the pumpkin puree and, that, and I can thaw it out when I need it for the pumpkin pie. And the bacon marinade, it's a marinade, it was, um, oil based so it was going to stay good for up until Thanksgiving. On the next day I just had order groceries because that was the one thing I needed to get done that day to move that step closer to a perfect Thanksgiving. And then I had a couple days off. I didn't put anything to do for the next about three days which is totally fine but then I got right back into it with making the dressing and soaking the walnuts so that I could make some of the cheeses for the cheese plate because the cheeses had to ferment for a couple days anyways so I could make that ahead of time. And then that Sunday before Thanksgiving I had on there get as much as I can from the farmer's market before I go to Whole Foods because I do try and get as much as I can at the farmer's market I just can't always get. I don't make a separate grocery list for the farmer's market because I can't always know what they're going to have but usually the Whole Foods list I'll get whatever I can at the farmers market before going to Whole Foods. On that day I had just a bunch of little recipes that needed to get done since Thanksgiving was going to be that Thursday and remember when you make food it stays good for up to seven days so you can make some recipes up to seven days out. Also things like carrots and celery you and onions you can cut four or five days before you use them. If you cut your carrots and celery early, make sure to store it in water because that'll keep it nice and crisp. And I do suggest cut all of your vegetables before Thanksgiving day. Throw on a TV show a few days before, cut the carrots, next day cut the celery, next day cut the onions. Do those little things before Thanksgiving because it makes the day go so much smoother when you can just when you have all of your things already prepped and all you have to do is throw them together and bake it off or throw them together, mix it up and it's done and ready. Makes things so much easier so that you can have homemade, so that you can have fresh homemade things and you don't have to do so many box things if you don't want to. Maybe you're doing them because you feel like you don't have time to do a, maybe you're doing them because you don't feel like you don't have time to make everything yourself when really you could break it out into these much smaller pieces and do them further ahead of time. And then you could have everything homemade if you wanted to. So that's just a little bit of how I break out my different prep lists for the days leading up to Thanksgiving. Like I said, I'm gonna have that PDF linked down below. And then for the Thanksgiving day prep list, I will write things in the order that I need to do them. So write the list and then change up the order so that I know what order I need to do things in to be the most efficient and effective. Now, a lot of y'all will probably have family and helping you out with your Thanksgiving dinner, but I make everything myself because I have control issues. Control issues in the kitchen. Not really 
other place. Well, sometimes other places, mostly in the kitchen. We're not gonna talk about it. Step seven for how to have the perfect Thanksgiving dinner. Execute the plan. All of this planning is wonderful and great, but you have to execute it. So even if you're really tired and you don't wanna do your one thing that's on your prep list that day, try not to fall behind. And that's why we broke things down into really small pieces so that it's easier to do that one little thing a day that's gonna help move you a step forward to this Thanksgiving dinner. Very project manager -y, I know, but I'm a huge planner and I have done this so many times that I've really worked it down to this formula that works so well. To just really have the best Thanksgiving dinner that you can have, that you can throw for your family. Like I said, I'll have templates and guides and stuff for you down in the description section. And then, and also whenever I have my menu done for my Thanksgiving, I will put that PDF out in a future video as well. So that if you just wanted to copy my Thanksgiving dinner, you can, or if you wanted to see exactly what I'm making and what recipes I come up with this year, I will give that to you guys. I think that is it. That is the guide to how to plan the perfect Thanksgiving dinner. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helps and I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit about my process and how I plan Thanksgiving dinner. This is also pretty much how I plan if I'm gonna do a catering event or something like that as well. You can use this guide for parties and events as well if you wanted to make all the food for parties and stuff. Let me know down in the comments if this method works for you, if you're making Thanksgiving dinner or if you're helping out making Thanksgiving dinner with your family or if y'all are even doing something this year since we still are in the time of Miss Rona. We're having just a couple people over at our house and it should be a nice dinner party. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss a recipe or how to or guide all Thanksgiving season. And share this with somebody who always is frantic trying to get everything done on Thanksgiving day. Go forth and plan and research food, which is always fun. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye y'all.